Well, welcome back. And uh, this is our segment with the Orange County Fire Authority. And Steve Concioli will be here in just a moment, but we have Captain Mark Molay here. Nice to meet you, sir. Good morning, how are you? I am doing great. You are up in uh, Tustin Ranch. What's the, uh, is it, um, what's the station number up there? Station 43, okay. uh, right across from our headquarters. All off right. Of Jamboree. And how long have you been with the Orange County Fire Authority? Uh, April will be 15 years. Wow. Yes, sir. Very good. Yes, sir. Now, prior to that, did you have um, any other experience with uh, other uh, other fire authorities or stations or cities? I did. I came, I lateraled from the city of Oceanside uh, Fire Department in San Diego County. I oh, was there okay. for eight years. So I was a firefighter paramedic there and then I lateraled over here in 2000. Wow. So a lot, a lot more opportunities. Great place to work. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're here. And uh, I know that your, your kids are watching, right, in our green room. And yes. um, you know what? I'll just say here, I, they can come in here and do the studio. So if someone wants to bring them in awesome. and kind of want to, <laughs> if uh, Stephanie's watching, she can bring them in if she wants. Awesome. So we're going to talk about a little over 10 years ago. Yes, sir. You were down in uh, the Gulf area and you were helping the victims of Katrina. And then just what, a couple of weeks later, it was Rita. Right. So we got some photos here. How did you get involved with that and tell us about your experiences and where you were. I mean, the, uh, of course, we always think of New Orleans, but it affected uh, Biloxi, Mississippi, and right. so many other, Gulfport and all Right, that. right. Yeah. yeah, it took a wide path. Yeah. Um, how I got involved, uh, I'm a logistics specialist, or I actually was, mm -hmm. with the Orange County Fire Authority Task Force 5. It's a FEMA task force um, through Department of Homeland Security, and I'm a logistics specialist. So basically, my job is like a radar O'Reilly if oh, you okay. will, for MASH. Basically, we take care of all the, the equipment, all the, uh, we take care of the guys, make sure that everyone has what they need. So we were uh, deployed to Hurricane Katrina. You could see some pictures here. Yeah. And we- Now, were you in New Orleans or other areas? Well, well? we were assigned to Metairie, Louisiana. Where, oh, sure, where I our know exactly base where that is. That's where the New Orleans Saints uh, football team practices. Yeah. So from there, we would branch us. out. They would send us to different parishes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would search these parishes. And as the crow flies, it'd, it'd probably be about maybe 20 minutes, maybe five mile drive. But yeah. because there were bridges and roads, it'd take you about four hours to get there. Um, wow. We'd even have to get on ferries to, to search these areas that were pretty remote. So we weren't really in New Orleans, we were outside in the parishes. Yeah, and um, it's, as I know exactly where it is because I've been down there a couple times. It's, it's not that far away. In right. fact, it's like, I think it's longer to get to the airport. <laughs> it might even be in, in between there, right. but it, you're right, it affected so many different areas. When did you get down there as far as, um, I think from the day that Katrina hit, and of course uh, for a few days there, when were you deployed over there? Uh, I believe it, later. Katrina hit August 31st, I want to say. So yeah. we got down there about five days later. And what happened was we arrived in Dallas, Texas. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, uh, we stayed in Dealey Plaza where JFK was shot. Mm -hmm. So we staged there because there was a lot of, uh, in the, it wasn't secure, the area. So we had to stay yeah. there for about three or four days. And we, we also got different type of supplies, and then we were deployed down to Metairie, Louisiana, where we branched out from there. But we bring a lot of equipment. We have 18-wheel rigs, uh, forklifts, a lot of equipment to keep our task force, which is mm -hmm. 82 personnel plus uh, physicians, wow. dogs. We have to keep everyone uh, basically fed, clothed, and you know equipped to yeah. go, and because we can't rely on the resources down there. So, so in, in a sense, it is very similar. Uh, you're doing different things, of course, to let's say like a mass unit that goes out in, right. in wartime right. because they are totally self-contained. They have to not only worry about the people they are helping, right. they have to worry about themselves and the crew. Correct, it's based yeah. on those principles. Yeah. So we basically bring everything, our own power, our own sleeping, our own uh, kitchens, restrooms, everything. Wow and we rely solely on ourselves. But where we were, there were several task forces, so we were able to get some resources, but we basically will rely on ourselves. All right. And there's uh, Mark right there. Yeah, there he is. Uh, great photo of you. And, uh, you know, it. although I'm sure that it was heartbreaking, we had, um, I know Steve sent uh, several photos and we, we chose, I chose about uh, six or seven or so, but, 
had to been rewarding as well. But at first, uh, recently, it was qu quite interesting that you hear that on a show I was uh, listening to, um, I think it was This American Life, uh, which is a podcast show, but they were talking about 10 years later, Katrina, and getting stories. They went down right. there 10 years later, interviewed people. Right. And it's just amazing how fresh it was right. still in their mind in certain areas. Right, definitely. This, this, uh, these pictures were actually in the Orange County Register. We had two reporters embedded with our task force. And, uh, and if I can explain what this, these pictures are, sure. uh, they actually made the paper. There was a story about it. This family here, there was a family of a, a mom and the father, who the father was quite ill, so we really didn't talk to, and uh, the son, or the daughter, her daughter, and the son-in-law. Mm -hmm. So we were actually driving through this parish, actually going home, and we saw them sitting on a balcony. So we stopped, and we, we asked them, we said, tell us your story, and what do you need? Mm -hmm. Do you want to leave? And they said no, but where they were, they were at their neighbor's house. Their okay. house got completely destroyed, Wow. And they told us the story of how the, the surge, the hurricane came through and how their house was destroyd, how they were clinging in a rowboat to a tree wow. at you know 100 mile an hour winds. So we got their story and really they didn't need much. So they asked us, we said, "What do you need?" And they said, the daughter said she wanted to take a bath. Wow. So we said, okay. And the mother wanted ice for her sodas and the son-in-law actually wanted cigarettes. So, and we never talked to the father. Mm -hmm. So the next day we left and we came back with the two reporters and myself, and this is Dave Boyd, who's now retired. And we brought some of that stuff. We wow. brought a 55 gallon drum of fresh water for the daughter to take a bath. We brought huge ice chest full of ice for the mom wow. to have cold sodas because they had nothing, no power, yeah. no water, no electricity, nothing. Amazing. And unfortunately, we brought some cigarettes, but that made them happy. Yeah, they that's didn't what ask the guy for wanted. money. They didn't want anything else except that. And you know what? Those are the little things that I remember from that. We that touched was amazing. Their life. How long were you down there? We were down there for 31 days. Wow. 31 days. But actually, we left. We got redeployed for Hurricane Katrina, as you mentioned. Okay. I, I, absolutely incredible. And I cannot imagine what it was like uh, down there. You know, I've seen all the, all the pictures back then. I was following it on social media how it was at least back then and uh, I'd gone there um, the year before I think yeah 2004 we were there uh, my wife and I for Thanksgiving and uh, you know enjoying all the great food and all that and then one year later we're looking at it going wow and they're still recovering they right. really are they're doing much better but as you know as we all know there were major hotels down there right I mean hotels run by Hilton and things like that right that were left unattended for five, six years yeah, because they were like, you know, we're not going to go back in right now. And mm -hmm. yeah. Did you ever go down there or just, a, it, just as a tourist? Yeah. I've been there as, with my wife. Yeah. It's, they did great work. Yeah. Definitely. And those are great stories, Mark. Yeah. Right. That's absolutely incredible. And have you been back? No, I have not. I haven't been back. I'd like to, I'd like to visit some of those areas, but no, I haven't. So, uh, but you know, we were a team and there was yeah. 82 got, you know, personnel and, and, there was a lot of stories of heroism and the guys would kind of put their lives at risk to search different areas and yeah you know a lot of mold and a lot of just uh you know nails and a lot of a lot of things that you could hurt yourself on and there was actually one rescue that happened uh, i believe that made the associated press that was world news mm -hmm. if you if and i don't know if you're there a picture i there? had the you probably didn't show that that's our guys carrying right, carrying a gentleman right, right yeah. and dr zuliger peter Correct. zuliger yeah. who is a well-known doctor around here yeah. started an iv on on him right and then right. he did he did survive for a little bit but it was an, it was yeah. enough time to where the family could could be with him and right. yeah but I know one thing we learned from there is if you rescue their animals, you'll rescue the people. A lot of people did wow. not want to leave. They didn't want to leave their animals there. I understand. And, and so what they learned is, is okay, we will take your dog um, with us. Yeah. So. I, I want to ask, um, you were part of USAR team in the California Task Force 5. Correct. What's the USAR? Is that a, with the United States, a kind of different task? They bring together different task teams? It's, it it's stands for Urban Search and Rescue, USNR okay. as, uh, yes, Sur okay. Urban Search oh, and Rescue. Oh, I get it, yeah. okay. Matter of fact, California has eight teams, and we are Task Force 5. 
Okay. So it's it's through FEMA and they're they're funded through FEMA, Department of Homeland Security. So every task force, they're all across the nation. And I'm not sure if uh, the total. Yeah, there's uh, 28 throughout 28, the nation. Okay. And there's eight in California. Wow. Right. That's that's great. Uh, Pretty amazing. Uh, wonderful stories, and uh, I'm sure it, it kind of really affected you for a long it time. Did. It probably still does. It did. Yeah, yeah amazing. Quite a we story. talk about the B story? Which yeah, is... let, yeah, let's talk about this. This is, um, happened a couple days ago, and uh, you know, a couple uh, golfers were out there, and some B, a hive was disturbed that was actually kind of in a drainage, uh, in a drain along the golf course. And I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but... Uh, Wow. You can see us. Right. And what happened was um, I, I happened to be on the paramedic unit that day on engine 222, just as, really? as a paramedic. I wasn't the PIO that day. Really? And so they just needed somebody? Or? Well, I just, I have a, a new backup uh, oh, PIO okay. who works at station 22. Oh, okay. Um, and so it was his first day as the PIO. So he was in my vehicle. I was on the fire engine and we responded there and what had happened was is these two nice ladies and when we got there staff at the golf course did an excellent job both staff and security they had moved them into the shade they had tried to get a bunch of the bees off mm -hmm. and um, what they said is they just finished they were on course number two mm -hmm. they just finished the second hole so like a hole 11 going towards yeah. 12 and they were walking towards the the tee box on 12 when a lawnmower went by and unfortunately it must have disturbed a beehive because we saw a beehive in an irrigation box um, and they just were at the wrong place at the wrong time. It's unfortunate because bees are out there yeah. in, everywhere, yeah. part of nature. And so the swarm of bees attacked one of the ladies and her friend, the, the friend ended up getting it a lot worse, went into action and started just swatting the bees away. Mm -hmm. And that first friend was able to run away. Well, she then was became surrounded by these bees. And so on scene, we were able to pull out 50 stingers from her scalp and her wow. head and her back and her arms. The hospital pulled out another 55. So That's she got amazing. stung, but she was doing so good. And um, at the hospital, she was definitely in, in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Her friend was in some pain. Her friend got stung 15 times, but happy to report she got released that night. She was gonna spend the night, she got released that night. I talked to her a few times the next day. She was doing really good. Wow. And she, she wanted to thank the firefighters. In fact, we were gonna bring the firefighters over that next day to, we had it all arranged and then something changed. Yeah. But um, she wanted to thank everybody, she's happy. And, and fortunate thing, none of them were allergic to bees. Um, the next day we went out there, the, they had a marshal in the area, they cordoned off the area. so. Uh, the golf course staff did an excellent job. Wow, that is, that's quite a story. And uh, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, it's happened at our house before, where mm -hmm. uh, we have a, like a little outdoor spa and sometimes, and they're gonna come around in the afternoon, three or four and all that, that's normal. But I'll forget one day, uh, I, my mother-in-law uh, was uh, visiting and we're in the kitchen, like late afternoon, and all of a sudden there's a couple bees in the kitchen. I'm like, what happened? Is the screen door open? What happened? What well, turns out the vent, the, the exhaust vent from the stove, somehow they, they went in there and we don't know why or, or, or what was going on. So uh, we, you know, we got outside and there's not much you can do. What, what I did, and I, although this doesn't, I didn't want to, I really didn't want to kill them because they're beneficial. I had some uh, spray, some just, insect spray and I just sprayed it just to kind of scatter them. Probably wasn't a good idea because they were pissed at <laughs> yeah, me. They got I mean, they agitated, know. yes. Yeah, they know. I mean, <laughs> like, whoa, mm -hmm. let's get inside. And really, probably about 10 minutes later, they were totally gone. Why they were in there, what happened, we turned on the exhaust vent and that, you know, probably right. got them out of there. But it, it's a hard situation where you know what to do. If they're going to start to swarm, you yeah, have so, any suggestions? Yeah, so the best thing to do, this is from the bee experts, even okay. I talked to them afterwards, you run. So basically, if there's, if you're all of a sudden in a swarm, you run away because you could outrun. When you stay put, they all start gathering around you. The, okay. The bees, bees like to be together. Yeah. So her friend did the right thing, swatted off, but what they should have done is swat and ran and just kind of got out of the area. Yeah. Because 
a lot of golf courses have bees. There's bees. That's part of nature. We right. need bees. Yes. They're, they're crucial. And um, this does not happen that, that often. Yeah. Um, we've had three in Orange County in a week. And they were all unfortunate. We had a, a car go off the 261 roll, just happened to hit a light pole that had a, a swarm of bees on it. Oh, so, wow. uh, and that happened the week before. So he was trapped in his vehicle. The vehicle was overturned. Two bystanders in two different vehicles pulled up to tend to him, and they were in the middle of the swarm. So they got they got bit. Each of them only got bit a couple times because they ran away from the yeah. scene. They ran just up the the side of the, the toll road, and they were okay. But they got bit a few times yeah and the second one was in Costa Mesa a roofer was just working on the roof and he agitated some bees he got stung but a neighbor uh, came running over to help and then that neighbor got wow. stung so that the key is stay away if you see him just go indoors run away you could outrun yeah. the bees yeah run. eventually they'll dissipate like I said with us there was a cop they must have reversed through the vent and came in mm -hmm. and so we had to do something right because <laughs> You know, what do you do? One thing uh, we want one other thing we want to talk about, we talked about it briefly, but your open house is coming up. They're going to be at um, uh, the different stations and then at the headquarters. Station 22 is actually tomorrow. And then uh, the Fire Authority Road up there in Irvine, the headquarters. We went to this last year, a lot of fun. That'll be the 24th. Right. So three fire stations in this area. Mm -hmm. So station 22 and then station 57 in Liso Viejo and station 19 in Lake Forest, okay. just up El Toro Road. So yeah, out of our I 72 fire is, yeah. stations, 31 of our fire stations throughout Orange County are having open houses from nine to two this Saturday. So bring the grandkids, bring the kids. It'll be a great day. It's a lot of fun. And, and if then, you can make it up there, this is really fun. A right. lot of activities. So yeah, so that that's all. That's, that's 10 to three on the 24th. And we, we just set up the headquarters. We offer free food, hot dogs, and, and we have demonstrations live burns and some our, our use our team will be yeah. there doing uh, our canine demonstration yeah which is unbelievable so it's, yeah. it's a great day so either day if you can't make this saturday come out on the 24th yeah it's it i i have to tell you we went up there last year and you get to uh, get close up to all the equipment you get to uh, go up in it everybody's there to help you out ask you uh, to have questions there's uh, there's food there and uh, there's all kind of vendors there. You, you have your uh, water watch program you can ask mm -hmm. about, and there's different vendors just for all kinds of things. And for the kids, you have almost like a little, you have a, your store is open. You have, you right. actually have OC a store, store that's right. always there, uh -huh. uh, but uh, it's open that you can go into and find all and kinds we'll of And we'll be talking about drowning prevention. We just had another tragic one last night in Irvine, a three-year-old. Oh, wow. Very sad. So that's what I've been dealing with this morning. And, that and Pedro's Tacos in San Clemente burned last night. Yeah, which I is, saw Which that. is a staple. Uh, there, there's, yeah. there's two, in fact. Uh, three of the four firefighters on Engine 60, which Mark used to work on mm -hmm. Engine 60, that were first on scene that actually put the fire out live in San Clemente. Yeah. And so they, they go there before they go surfing, after they go surfing. One, one of the firefighters brought his son there just the other day. I mean, it is... It's part of the community. Yeah. Is, is it, it gone or? Well, it, it's it's suffered some yeah. some definite extensive damage inside. But the firefighters did a great job. It, um, contained it to the kitchen area, but there was smoke damage throughout. Wow, that's too bad. Okay. Uh, but hopefully they can rebuild. By the way, uh, you know if uh, you go on Twitter, uh, OCFA underscore PIO, just to at uh, OCFA underscore PIO, you can get all the information there. And uh, you can follow along, you know, if you think there's an event going on, um, maybe you, you see something going on, you want to find out about it or something, you can go on here and get all the information there at their website as well, ocfa.org. Kids, come on over for a minute. This is uh, Mark's kids. And why don't you stand in between there and introduce your kids here. Awesome. This is Leah. Hi, Leah. She just had a birthday. She's 11. Nice to meet you. And this is Patrick. Patrick is eight years old in third grade. Leah's in sixth grade. She's my junior higher. Wow. I have another son, but he's junior uh, high already. Wow. <laughs> that's hard. That's hard for cute. you, right? Uh, it's getting there. Yeah. <laughs> and you have one more son. One more son, Daniel, who's in the green room. He didn't want to come in. He is twelve. So okay. he's a seventh grader. Yeah. So wow. Great. Thank you for having him on. Yeah. Can you it's great. To, it's really <laughs> great that you were to come by you and see here. your dad. You yeah, you can stand yeah, right there. Right here. And uh, are you going to the open houses up there? I, I'm we're going to sure try to will. make it. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's All fun right. for them. Total fun for them, isn't it? You've been, remember? It's really fun for kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, last year we went and uh, 
uh, last year with my daughter, who is going to be nine in uh, just a few weeks. But we had a great time. And you guys do a lot up there, the demonstrations, the canine. You have right. the, the kids can get out uh, hoses and uh, put out like a, mm -hmm. a fake fire. You have like a little building right, standing they, they up. Right, they squirt water. And yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I think the kids just love going around all the equipment. that You, you can go in there and where the equipment is serviced and actually walk under mm -hmm. one of the trucks and look up. And you know what? Those are even clean underneath. Right. It is probably <laughs> the best program that we do annually is our yeah. department open house. We have thousands of people, anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000 people show up on that Saturday yeah. to come and go through our maintenance facility, our drill grounds. Those pictures are from last year where we, we had a, a live burn there. We yeah, you saw do. the firefighters. We talk about smoke alarms, the importance of smoke alarms and how they quickly alert. Right. You know, it, our there's just so much information and it's really fun. It's a great facility up there and uh, you can have a, you know, a lot of fun and people just show up, right? You don't right. need to make you a come, reservation. You can come anytime. Okay. And they direct you where to park because uh, there's very limited parking right. there. Right. So, so most of the people park at the Salvation Army okay. parking lot and then there's shuttles. Yeah. And we, we provide shuttles and we, it's just free of charge. I mean, it's yeah. a great event that we put on. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Hey, it was great to have you on. Uh, always good to have you, Steve. Mark, great to, great to meet great, you. Thank you. I appreciate and, uh, it. Thank you. Kids, great to meet you as well. How'd you get the day off from school? What happened here? Uh, it's uh, parent-teacher conferences. Okay, yes. very good. Yes, yes. parent-teacher conferences. <laughs> All right. And, uh, but it, it's good that you could come on. And great stories. Hope to see you again sometime. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, Steve, we'll see you. Uh, when's our next one? Next. Coming up? Um, it's coming up. Right, we, we have it, right. <laughs> yeah, we did kind of an extra one right. uh, this time around for uh, anniversary of the, the hurricanes down there. So. Good to have you all on. And uh, folks, remember, we are uh, not here on uh, Columbus Day. However, uh, we're going to bring you those three movies, or movies three times. Uh, Bessie is, of course, our Monday movie. Then we're going to replay Love and Mercy. So uh, watch that. That one's at noon. And uh, everyone, have a good weekend. Hot, hot, hot. That's all I can tell you. That's the way it is, right? Okay. All right. Take care. And we'll, uh, I'll see you Tuesday. All right? Bye-bye. Very good.